Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay and welcome to my cabin where I run on Zwift and store a lot of my shoes. Now one thing as a bit of a shoe fan and an apprentice shoe reviewer is that the question that you often ask is well what size do I need to get in a particular model? And if I look at my shoes over the years I've got so I've got shoes in four different sizes 12, 12 and a half, 13 and 13 and a half and I always used to think I was a 12 and then in recent years, I've suddenly found that, that I'd like to have a bit more room in the toe box. I've gone with this thing that I should have a thumb width in, in the toe box. So if we look at all my boxes here, there's all these different sort of numbers on them. So what I thought to do today is to have a look at all these, what these numbers different means and see how the different brands interpret them. Because what I've found is that different brands interpret the sizing differently. And so if you're a size something in one brand, you may not actually be that size in another brand because of the way they do the sizing. And that's definitely noticeable for me that in some shoes I have to take a 13, but the equivalent shoe in say a New Balance may be a 13 and a half. So let's have a quick look at the boxes here. So here's some of my shoes. Now in Adidas, they don't tend to go up to any more than a 12 and a half in Adidas Zero shoes. But you notice here there's quite a few different sizes. You've got US 13, you've got UK 12 and a half, You've got a J, which I think stands for Japan at 310, and you've got a China at 295, and I think the F there is 48 is the European size. If we move on to say the Nike one, that is my next percents here. 14 I think is the US number, 13 is the UK one. There's a centimeter size of 32, and a Europe size of 48.5. And the women's size, if, if there's any women who's got bigger feet as me, they've got slightly different sizing as well. New Balance are different again. There's a, the 1080 V10s, I've got the narrow one there in the US 14, which comes up at UK 13 and a half, but that's a European size 49. In Hoka, I seem to be able to get away with a UK 12 and a half, US 13, and that's an EU 48. In ASICs, I seem to be able to either take a a, th a UK 13 or a UK 12. In the row blast here, I've got a UK 12, and that says a centimetre size of 30.5, which is a lot less than, say, the Nike one. And in the Brooks here, we've got, uh, similar to the Nike there, it's a US 14, UK 13, centimetre size of 32, and a Euro size of 48.5. So what I thought we'd do now is a lot of my shoes are Nike, is to look on their Nike website under their shoe guide and see what exactly they recommend you to wear and how you should measure your foot. So just as a reference here, I've got the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2s on in the UK 13. And these these feel like they're a nice length for me. And so if I, I've got a nice thumb width there on both sides. And I should measure my thumb width and it's sort of, at the maximum width is about two centimeters. Okay, so here we are on the Nike website and I found the Nike size charts for men. And if you scroll down here, it tells you the first thing you need to do is go and measure your feet, basically. So I'll uh, go and do that now. So if we do what Nike is suggesting, go and measure your feet with my Nike socks on here. And you can see the first problem that with a bit of A4, my foot is actually bigger than the A4 bit of paper. So what I've done in true Dina Smith style, I've actually measured my foot before at 30.2 centimetres. And both the left and the right one are pretty much the same. OK, so my feet I've measured at 30.2 centimetres. And if I look on, my ch on the chart here, you can see that I basically fall between what is a UK 12 and a half and a UK 13. Now Nike don't do running shoes in 12 and a half, so I've seen a few in basketball shoes. So not surprisingly why I feel most comfortable in the UK 13. That just gives me just 0.3 of a centimetre over and above what they say. Now this chart doesn't actually have all the centimetre sizes that you see on the box. So what I found on the Russian Nike website, they've got a better chart with all the different sizes on it. So let's just pop over to that one now. So here we go, here's the Russian uh, Nike sizing chart. Uh, although I can't speak Russian, you, you can make out what are the uh, different numbers here. So we've got the centimetre sizes, which is the ones that we see on the box in that column there. We've got the UK size, we've got the European size, and we've got the US size, and we've also got the your actual foot size that you've measured. So if I go down again to 30.2, I'm um, between the UK 12 and a half and 13, and you can see there that as I have on the box, that is the 32 centimeters. So I hope you can see there on the box in my size, it has the centimeter 32. So what do these centimeter sizes mean? Well, in, in Nike at least, they basically seem to refer to the length of the insoles, i.e. the effective length of the shoe. 
And you can see there with my tape measure that this insole in my Turbo 2 is more or less the 32 centimeters that they quote. Okay, so if we go back to the chart, you can see that I mentioned earlier that my thumb width is about around about two centimeters long. So you can see that my um, actual foot being 30.2 and the actual length of the shoe being 32, then 30.2 plus two comes to pretty much 32, isn't it? So that suggests that that is the exact same right size for me, giving myself a nice thumb width at the, uh, in the toe box. Now, in the past, I have had some Nike shoes in a UK 12, including the original 4% Vaporflies. In fact, I used UK 12s in pretty much all my Nike shoes up until a few years ago. And I often wonder why they always felt a bit tight. So I think it's finally dawned on me that I was only able to give myself half a thumb width there of room. And uh, now with a thumb width, I feel just so much more comfortable in these shoes. So let's take a look at some other vendors. So let's go to the Adidas one now. So here we are, I've come onto the Adidas shoe size guide and sure enough they've got exactly the same way to measure your foot that Nike have. Although interestingly their results aren't quite the same. So if we take my 30.2 centimeter heel to toe length and you find that the nearest shoe size that they recommend is a 13 or you might argue a 13.5. Now the big problem for me in Adidas is they don't actually do a 13 or a 13.5 in a lot of their performance shoes. None of the Adi Zero range, Adios Pro, uh, ones like that, the Boston 9, the SL20, the Adios 5, all have to get in a 12.5. So here I am in my Boston 9s in the UK 12 and a half and I do, if I do the thumb test in this one, then sure enough, I only get about half a thumb width there at the top. So they sort of fit, but they're much tighter and I feel much more comfortable in the UK 13 in the Nike than these ones. So here's my Boston 9 box and you can see that it's UK 12 and a half and that J size there, 310, I think that's the equivalent centimetre size. So let's just go and see if we can measure the insoles. So I'll whip out the insole from my Boston 9, let's see how long it is. And we can see that, but sure enough, the insole in the 12 and a half is 31 centimeters. So, as I showed, I've only got like half a thumb width of room there. So it's not it's not ideal for me, and I do have to admit, but I've, I do like them because they come up narrow, so it's a bit of a trade-off. But one thing that's interesting to see that how the different sizes come up here. So a UK 12 and a half in an Adidas would actually be the same as a, a UK 12 in a Nike because that 31 centimeter length is what you see in the 12.5 in, in, in the Adidas, but a 31 centimeter length in a Nike would be a 12. So if you, if you um, choose, it's a good ex example, if you're choosing a shoe in Nike Adidas and you say, what is your true to size? It may not be actually the same for each brand. So check out these charts and make sure you've got the right length for you. So let's go on to some other one. So here we are on the ASIC site and they've got a similar diagram of how to measure the length of your feet. Now what's different about ASICs is that the centimetre sizes they quote on their chart seems to refer to the length of your feet. So uh, if you remember that mine's a 30.2 and that suggests that in an ASIC I can get away with a 12. And sure enough in the Meta Racer and, and the Road Blast I do have a 12. Although I've got a 13 and an overblast and find them quite roomy. So that's probably <laughs> explains why that is. So again, be careful with ASICs because their sizing does appear, at least for me, to come up longer than other brands. So it looks like I can almost get away with a 12 and ASICs, whereas I have to go 13 and a Nike and would go 13 and a half and Adidas for the equivalent size if I had it. And so that's a whole what, size and a half difference. So here's the box for my Road Blast in a UK 12 and you can see that the centimetre size there is saying 30.5 as it is on their size chart. So what is interesting though, although the centimetre size for ASIC says 30.5 in my UK 12, if I take out the insole of the Road Blast and measure it, it actually comes up 32 centimetres, exactly the same as my Turbo 2. If I put them sort of side by side here, it appear to be pretty much exactly the same. So that is basically saying that an ASICS 12 is equivalent to a, to a Nike 13. So that's a whole size difference.
So I was just demonstrating the, ins the length of the insole in a UK 13 and a half in New Balance seems to be actually 31.5, despite the fact that these, they're suggesting from this side chart it should be 32. And although that was a 1080v10, I've also measured it in the RC Elite that's just come in, and that's also a 31.5. So it seems to be a standard thing. Okay, so we just quickly look at Brooks. They don't actually, Brooks don't actually send, seem to give a, an actual centimeter, you know, the actual foot size. So, but the sizing here does seem very similar to what Nike do. And a Brooks UK 13 for me seems to be about right. So if we look up here, the 13 is actually a 32 centimeter length. And when I've measured Brooks, that seems to be pretty much um, what they say so I think Brooks and Nike sizing is notionally the same because I had to send back the Hyperion Elite in a 12 I just felt it was not enough room for me I was barely getting that half a thumb width at the top and uh, considering that she was 210 pounds I thought that one was best best sent back and I'll uh, use my money for something else but a good example of how you can sort of predict that the shoe probably wouldn't be the, the right length for you but you know maybe sometimes they come up slightly longer So if we move along to the Hoka Oni Oni, I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm never quite sure. And they also tell you to measure your foot in a similar way to Nike and Adidas and Asics. And if we look up what 302 for me comes on their millimetre size, presumably, where it's basically smack middle between a UK 12 and a half and a UK 13. Now in Hoka, they don't, although they've got one in the size chart here, I don't think I've ever seen a, a 13 in a Hoka. So I've gone for a th uh, 12 and a half in the Rincon and the Carbon X, and I think they, they fit pretty well. So here I've got the, the original Rincon in a UK 12 and a half, and Hoka seems to come up quite large because I've got pretty much a full thumb width there. But again, it's another example of how the sizing sort of differs. So, you know, 12 and a half is probably the best bet for me in a Hoka, but the, um, the 13 may be the best bet for me in a Nike, and the 13 and a half may be the best bet for me in, in an Adidas or a 12 in an Asix <laughs> or a 13 and a half in a New Balance so, so you can see how it's all very different unfortunately I can't measure the insole of a Rincon because it's sort of glued in as is the Carbon X so the centimetre size may be slightly misleading in a Hoka especially if you've got and I think any shoe that maybe you've got a glued insole it just gives you a notional idea of how that might come up indeed here's the box of my UK 12 and a half in a Rincon with a 31 Japan size so if we move along to the on size guide, now I never actually had a, a non shoe, so it might be a good test to see of my theories to see what size I would actually take based on their size chart. Unfortunately, they don't seem to give an actual sort of centimeter actual foot length measurement, but here in the men's sizes, they do give the Japan size, which seems to be the centimeter length of the insole. So for me, I've seen that working in a 31.5 or a 32 length, and that is equivalent to their UK 13 and a half, it seems. So with a Japan size of only 31, although that kind of works in the Hoka, I think if I were to get an on shoe, I'd probably take an initial stab at a 13.5. Unfortunately, they don't do a 13, so I'm kind of stuck between the two. So a quick look at Salcony, no, I'm quite sure how to pronounce that one either, but uh, oddly their size chart, they seem to have also like given up around my size, so um, I'm a UK 13, I feel most comfortable in, a Sal in, a, in one of these ones. <laughs> so uh, they don't even actually give a centimetre size here, but I think you can extrapolate what it says on the box, it's the 32. So I think basically Nike and Salcony sizing are exactly the same, at least they are in my size, so I'm happy to have to take a 13 in both of them. Now, of course, the length of the insole is not necessarily the full picture because it kind of depends how it actually sits in the shoe, how much padding there may be on the heel, which kind of effectively throws you forward, or how tight the toe box is, which sort of prevents you, your feet going forwards. And a good example of that is the comparison of the Boston 6 here and the Boston 9. These are both allegedly in a UK 12 and a half. And if I take out the insoles and measure them, they are exactly the same. But only really you can see that the, the top one there, the Boston six is noticeably shorter than the Boston nine and that's why I've <laughs> had tried to cut the thing up because I could it was so tight I couldn't really get my feet in so a good example of perhaps that 
just knowing the length of the shoe, not necessarily the full picture, and you do obviously have to sort of try them out, but um, at least knowing how long your feet is and what shoe is meant to fit you in a particular brand gives you a head start. And of course in Adidas, I know that really a 12 and a half is too small for me. So then if it effectively comes up smaller, and perhaps a whole size less than I should be, and then I'm really struggling. Okay, so I hope you appreciated this little uh, view of all these different size charts. And uh, I think the message I would uh, give from this is, first of all, measure your feet. Look at these size charts and see what size you think works. Also think, have you got a thumb width at the top? Do you actually like that? Maybe some people like a bit less in, say, a racing shoe. Some people might think a thumb width is too much. But yeah, work out what size shoe you think fits you the best. Measure the insole. Work out exactly how long that one is. Use that as a bit of a benchmark to compare with other shoes from and, and from other brands. I think another thing to remember, of course, is that generally in running shoes, you want a bit, bit, bit more room than you would do in, say, your, your normal sort of day shoes because your feet will expand. So I think that's largely the purpose of that thumb width view at the top. Especially in, say, like a race like a marathon where you might be running for even the best guys, <laughs> two hours something, that your feet are going to expand and probably going to fill some of that thumb width gap up. So you certainly don't want a shoe that's um, rubbing against the, the toe box before you start. That's going to be very comfortable and the old dreaded black toes will come up. So I hope you found this interesting and look forward to seeing you on the next one. One thing I would say is that I never actually asked before to people to subscribe to my channel, but as I've been sort of hoping to get near 1,000 subscribers, I think I've now got to the point where at least I hope you find some of these videos sort of vaguely useful. I never used to ask for uh, people to subscribe in the past because I was a bit embarrassed to think that my, my offerings weren't that great because I don't think, find nothing worse than these sort of new YouTubers who spend more time asking you to subscribe than telling you what their story is. So I wanted to sort of get my videos up to some sort of vaguely reasonable standard before I started sort of asking, but it seems to be the done thing. So if you could please subscribe if you're still watching by now, we most appreciate it. And um, when I get to 1,000 subscribers, which I was hoping to do by the end of the year, and I think I may do if I carry on, then uh, I'll have to see what sort of challenge I could do. Obviously doing like a sort of a 10K time trial will be the obvious thing, but it's a bit too too obvious, isn't it? So maybe I need to think of something slightly different. But anyway, away off that, yeah. And a few more videos to come along before we need to get that one done. I've got the RC Elite in for um, review, but I've had got a bit of an Achilles injury, so I haven't been able to do much running for the last week or so. So I've got to save that review for um, when I can actually do it at proper justice. But yeah, initial impression is it's um, pretty good, but probably won't um, replace my next percent as my favoured race shoe. Okay, so thanks once again for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.